In the late 19th century, nearly 3 million Italians migrated to the US. When they arrived, many of them were bitterly disappointed because their new home was not the paradise they had thought it would be. It is said that many of them wrote back home, saying not only are the roads not paved with gold, they are not paved at all. In fact, we are the ones who are supposed to pave them. Those Italian immigrants were not alone in thinking that America is where dreams come true. Even in the early days of its existence, it had a strong hold on the imagination of poor people elsewhere. In the early days, per capita income was still only around the European average and 50% lower than that of Britain. But poor Europeans still wanted to move there because the country had an almost unlimited supply of land and wages three or four times higher than those in Europe. It is not just prospective immigrants who are attracted to the promised land. In the last few decades, businessmen around the world have wanted and often tried to emulate the US economic model. Its free enterprise system which lets people compete without limits and rewards the winner. With entrepreneurs richly rewarded and workers having to adapt quickly, the system does create high inequality. However, even the losers in this game willingly accept such outcomes. Given the country's high social mobility, their own children could be the next Thomas Edison, Bill Gates or Elon Musk. With such incentives to work hard, America has been the richest country in the world for the last century. So Americans just live better. Actually, this is not quite true. The US is not the richest country in the world anymore. Now several European countries have higher per capita incomes. The World Bank data tells us that the per capita income of the US in 2023 is $80,035. There were seven countries with higher per capita income in dollar terms, starting with Ireland at the top through Luxembourg, Singapore, Qatar, United Arab Emirates, Switzerland, and ending with Norway. This makes America only the eighth richest country in the world. But some of you may say that cannot be right. When you go to the US, you just see that people there live better than the Norwegians or the Swiss do. One reason why we get that impression is that the US is much more unequal than the European countries and therefore looks more prosperous to foreign visitors than it really is. Foreign visitors to any country rarely get to see the depraved parts of which the US has many more than Europe. But even ignoring this inequality factor, there is a good reason why most people think that the US has a higher living standard than European countries. You may have paid $55 for a 5-mile taxi ride in Geneva when a similar ride in New York would have cost you around $20. In Oslo, you may have paid $100 for a dinner that could not have possibly been more than $50 in Houston. The most important among the non-traded things are person-to-person -person labor services, such as driving taxis and serving meals in restaurants. Trade in such services requires international migration, but that is severely limited by immigration control, so the prices of such labor services end up being hugely different across countries. In other words, things such as taxi rides and meals are expensive in countries such as Switzerland and Norway because they have expensive workers. They are cheap in countries with cheap workers such as Mexico and Thailand. When it comes to internationally traded things such as TVs or mobile phones, their prices are basically the same in all countries, rich and poor. Does this allow us to say that the US has the highest living standard in the world? To begin with, having a higher average income than other countries does not necessarily mean that all US citizens live better than their foreign counterparts. For example, Despite having one of the highest average per capita income, the US ranks only around 30th in the world in health statistics such as life expectancy and infant mortality, and much higher crime rates than in Europe or Japan. 8 times more people in prison than Europe and 12 times more than Japan shows that there is a far bigger underclass in the US. Second, unlike other rich countries, it has cheap service workers. There is a large inflow of low-wage immigrants from poor countries, many of them illegal, which makes them even cheaper. 
Moreover, even the native workers have much weaker fallback positions in the US than in European countries of comparable income level, because they have much less job security and weaker welfare supports. US workers, especially the non-unionized ones in the service industries, work for lower wages and under inferior conditions than do their European counterparts. This is why things like taxi rides and meals at restaurants are so much cheaper in the US than in other rich countries. This is great when you are the customer, but not if you are the taxi driver or the waitress. Last but not least, in comparing living standards across countries, we should not ignore differences in working hours. Even if someone is earning 50% more money than I am, you wouldn't say that he has a higher living standard than I do if that person has to work double the number of hours that I do. The same applies to the US. Americans, befitting their reputation for workaholism, work longer hours than the citizens of any other rich country. Americans work 10% longer than most Europeans and around 30% longer than the Dutch and the Norwegians. Now, it is perfectly reasonable for someone to argue that they want to work longer hours if that is necessary to have a higher income. They would rather have another TV than one more week of holiday. And who am I, or anyone else, to say that that person got their priority wrong? But most people would agree that at a low level of income, an increase in income is likely to improve your quality of life, even if it means longer working hours. At this level, even if you have to work longer in your factory, higher income is likely to bring a higher overall quality of life. By improving your health through better food, heating, hygiene, and healthcare, and by reducing the physical demands of household work through more household appliances, piped water, gas, and electricity. However, above a certain level of income, earning more at the cost of working longer hours may reduce the quality of your life. There is no simple way to compare living standards across countries. Per capita income, especially in purchasing power terms, is arguably the most reliable indicator. However, by focusing just on how many goods and services our income can buy, we miss out a lot of other things that constitute elements of the good life, such as the amount of quality leisure time, job security, freedom from crime, access to healthcare, social welfare provisions, and so on. While different individuals and countries will definitely have different views on how to weigh these indicators against each other and against income figures, non-income dimensions should not be ignored if we are to build societies where people genuinely live well.